Hi guys, so yes, it is day one of brooding and our poultry house is actually ready. Now we've skipped forward because I didn't share the completion of the house. The house is now completed. I can see, you can see a ramp. The upper section is completed. The lower section is completed. We've done the plumbing on the lower section. Well, both sides. We've fitted in the feeders and the drinkers. Everything is ready and I have brought chicks into the house. Now, of course, I'm supposed to share a video about the cost of constructing such a house because a lot of you guys have actually been asking me, how much does it cost to construct such a chicken house? This has the capacity for 2,000, 2000 birds ideally, but I'm putting in 2,500 because I know what to do. I'm supposed to do six birds per square meter, but then I'm choosing to do eight birds per square meter. You shouldn't try it out if it's your very first time. So that's our chicken house and over there in the background we have a small house for the guys who are going to be working here um starting out it's still being completed yeah so today is day one of brooding the birds just arrived it's actually early in the morning and you could tell from my face that i'm actually quite tired I, I didn't sleep the entire night i had to transport the birds as soon as they were vaccinated and they were ready i had to transport them quite far away you know over 200 kilometers and bring them to this farm and now the birds are ready we've placed them inside the brooder they are getting acclimated here you can see um it's a makeshift place for cleaning the feeders and the drinkers so these are our pan feeders that we're going to be using to place the feed for the birds they have been washed and we're just letting them dry we don't have water reaching right here we have our tap quite in the distance over there in a plantation it's because we're going to be building the chicken houses going that way and we needed the tap to be there but well with time we're going to have to put up a tank here and then get the place ready and then our birds are inside the house you can see the basins that we've been using to wash the feeders and the drinkers but well let's get in and it's going to be quite loud on the inside but hey let's just get in and check out what's actually going on so this is the place it's quite disorganized this area is quite disorganized you can see my tripod here we have a few building materials uh, that we've been using but this other side the birds are on the inside there this place is actually disinfected and clean you can see that i'm in my gumboots and everything that's here has been washed apart from the boxes these are the boxes in which we delivered the chicks yeah and you can see the feeders and the drinkers. Actually, the drinkers alone, the drinkers are hanging up here. So these are adult drinkers, and we're not going to be using them at the moment. We're going to wait for the birds to grow up and become big enough for us to use them. And then these are our font drinkers for the chicks. You can see them here. So this is where the drinker sits. Um, let me pick them out. This is the top. So ideally, it sits on like this. And there you go. This is your drinker. These are the drinkers we are using currently on the inside. Hopefully I'll be able to move in and it won't be too loud. Here is the charcoal that we're actually using to brood. We're using charcoal that looks exactly like this. Yeah. So we've made some stoves and put them inside. You can see our wood shavings. Yeah. It's a generous layer. Not like some farms I go to and you find just less than an inch in fact even less than a centimeter of wood shavings we try to be as generous as possible the house was completed you can see that the plumbing was done over here this was done and we're just waiting for a few things to get done now let's go inside and we'll check out our buds okay um, here is another food dip that we are using actually to go inside the brooder we are not using our gumboots because you risk stepping on the chicks so you remove the gumboots, step inside here, okay, and then we get in. Okay, here we go. It's quite loud inside here, but I hope you guys will. So you can see that the chicks are a bit skewed to one side, but that's because when you talk, the birds move towards you. So I'm going to move, for example, to the other corner. That's actually empty. And in a few minutes time, you guys are going to notice that the birds are going to move towards that corner. For some reason, they like it when someone vocalizes. Uh, they move towards the area where someone is talking. So let's move over there. Okay. We'll move over there. Here we go. Okay. All right. So I'll just kneel down over here as I show you guys around. And you can already see all the birds running towards me. All the birds are literally running towards me because they love it 
when someone is talking. For some reason, I don't understand why. When you're talking, they will all run towards you. Now you can see them surrounding me. They are all leaving the other area. And you can see our drinkers. So we've placed our drinkers inside the chicken house. And these drinkers have the water which the chickens are actually drinking. We've placed a vitamin and glucose inside those drinkers to provide energy to the birds and take away stress from the movement. And then these are also the hanging drinkers that's, that are on this side. So as you can see, we have brooder pepper at the bottom. And the purpose of this brooder pepper is to ensure that the birds are not eating the wood shavings. You see, under the brooder pepper, we have wood shavings. If we just leave the wood shavings down, as soon as we place the chicks, you see right now we haven't introduced feed yet. Yeah? So if we just leave the wood shavings down, the birds are going to start eating the wood shavings instead of eating food because they still don't know what food is. The other thing is that we haven't yet given them feed and the purpose is that we want to rehydrate them and energize them before we give them feed. Actually, in the next few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, we're going to be giving them their feed and uh, because now they have taken the water, you want them to get rehydrated. They have been moving, they have been stressed. So you want them to first regain energy uh, before you give them feed. So I can pick up one. Well, this one doesn't have a lot of water in its crop. I can feel it. Ah, it actually does have water. Yeah, it does have water in the crop. So when you pick up the buds, you can tell that some of the buds have water in their crop. So this bud actually does have water in the crop. Most of the buds do have water in the crop. But I have a colleague who is helping my colleagues who are working in the house. You guys may not see them in the distance. They're helping to make sure that the buds that look a bit weak are given water. But these buds, as soon as they were hatched, they are brought here. So they're going to be really, really good buds. There are very few delays. They're going to be strong buds. I don't expect a lot of mortalities because they have gone through the correct steps in order to get here. Right there, you can see our stoves. We're using just two stoves, really big stoves, but they are warming up the house really nicely. You can see that we even opened up the curtains, and that's because the heat was too much on the inside here. Our brooder is actually smaller than is recommended, but it's because I never build it according to the recommended size. It's hard to keep the temperature in if you build using the recommended size. So this usually works for me. About a half of what is recommended usually works for me. And then with time, we get to space them out. I'll move about so that they get spaced a little bit more. And then we're going to prepare to give them the feed. Let me go and show you guys the feed that I'm giving the birds. Now this is the feed that you're going to use. These are pellets. And it's from a company called Cow Dyes. Now these guys didn't pay me to advertise for them and I'm not interested. I'm, I'm not advertising at all. It's simply because the product has worked for me. So why not recommend it to a few guys over there who want to use it. So it's Cow Dyes and this is pellet feed for, for the layers. Yeah. So we'll open it up so that you guys can see what it looks like. Here you go. You can see what it looks like, yeah? So the, it's pelleted feed, and it's good, very nutritious. And it's quite pricey, honestly, quite pricey. So I only give it for the first few days, maybe up to a week. I'll probably give them for like four days, this pelleted feed. And then after that, I'll switch to another kind of feed. But it's really good food. Expensive, but it works really well. So it's what I'm going to be using for the buds today and that's what we're going to be putting on the pan feeders actually i think it's right about time that we start giving them the feed there you go our feeder so you can see our feeder with our pelleted feed most of the birds have not yet figured out what the feed is and you can see all of them rushing towards me again because i'm here and i'm talking see all of them surrounding me and my colleague over there is moving around distributing the feed. So he's placed a few pans. You can see one over there. And another right there at the bottom. Yeah? So with time, the birds are going to figure out what the feed is. Right now, they haven't. If we take a closer look over there, now they are starting to figure out what the feed is. Some of them are pecking on it. And with time, they are all going to be eating the feed. Yeah? So, um... You can see him over there. So he's distributing the feed on the pans, taking it all around the house. It's been at least maybe an hour of uh, rehydrating the buds. And that's because we didn't have so much of a delay. If the buds are delayed so much, then this would take way longer. You could, I could do maybe two, three, even four hours of rehydrating the buds. But my chickens are not dehydrated. I can feel them. 
I can feel their bodies. For example, this one, I can feel its body. Um, it's strong. It's really strong. So I'm not worried about dehydration at the moment. I've given them enough energy and now they can start feeding. Like I said, we have 2,500 birds, a little bit more than that. And then on arrival, we had five birds dead and then about four of them have cords or nevels that are not healed. So those ones are also going to die. So uh, the transportation was awesome. It was perfect because if out of 2,500 birds, you only have five birds dead, of course due to piling or suffocation or maybe they were the weak ones, then that means you are doing really, really good. And actually my plan, tell me what you guys think. My plan is to share each and every day uh, for the first week with you guys. Share the development of the birds, the mortalities, any eventualities, any vaccinations, you know, if any. The birds have actually come vaccinated, so they were vaccinated against Newcastle and IB on day one, Gumboro, and uh, what else were they vaccinated against? And um, Merrick's disease, yeah? Those were vaccinated on day one. I'll share the other vaccinations with you. If any, I don't think we have any vaccinations in the first seven days. I think the first vaccination after now will be on day nine. So I'm not sharing any vaccinations. Maybe if I share day nine of the video. But tell me what you think. If you want me to actually share each and every day so that you see the progress for the first one week, I'll actually do share. And soon I'm also going to be sharing with you guys the actual cost of constructing this house, yeah? Because a lot of people, I believe, want to construct it and they just want to know whether they can afford it or not. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, smash the notification bell, that way you never miss out on an upload. Lots of love. Bye!